Let's talk about your IFM modules. More specifically, let's talk about your input IFM module in your 24 volt cabinet and how it's pinned out. Pin out means what in this device is communicating with the other, what's, what has continuity between one terminal and another or between the fuse and between the terminals and between the terminals and this pin out which goes to your IFM cable. Initially you're gonna get this manual that comes with your IFM module and it really doesn't have enough information. You're going to need to go online to eTools, Alan Bradley's um, um, eTools, and put in your very specific IFM catalog number. Once you do that, you'll be able to download a PDF that gives you a very specific pinout for your exact IFM module. Let's take a look at the 64 pins on the wiring diagram. At first, it's overwhelming, and there's quite a few, and it's hard to understand. Then you recognize, well, there's four groups of 16 that are just repeated. So in order to understand this, let's look at just one of those four groups. Okay, so now we just have 16 of our 64 terminal screws to try and figure out what they do. Let's look at our 24 volt and how it connects up to and into A10, terminal A10. That brings 24 volts supply into the IFM. That in turn is jumpered to A10, 12, 14, and 16. So all four of those terminal screws are really connected to each other internally. They're all jumpered. So connecting one wire to A10 takes care of 12, 14, and 16 as well. Now let's take a look at the negative side of the power supply. It's going to come down and connect to COM1 or terminal screw A11. A11 is also jumpered. It's jumpered to A13, 15, and 17. So one negative wire up to A11 really takes care of A13, 15, and 17. So what we've done with just two wires, a 24 volt power supply, is connected to a positive to A10 and a negative to A11 and taking care of eight of our 16 terminals. Let's talk about terminals B10 through 16. They're actually fuse protected and they'll feed the supply to your field device. In this case, it's a simple switch. So B10 through 16 are fuse protected, come into your switch and once the switch is made, it'll actually come to B11, and that actually feeds input 4 on your I.O. module up on your PLC, which is pre-wired and connected to your IFM. Now let's talk about wiring up a three-wire sensor like this photo eye. We're familiar with the Kien sensor, and it has a brown positive line, a black signal line, and a blue negative connection. The white is a normally closed, which we won't deal with for now. So let's go ahead and connect this up. Let's start with the brown wire, which is gonna get connected to the B12 terminal. That'll supply 24 volts fused to our field device. And the negative lead is gonna to connect to A13 on the terminal strip. And then the third wire, the black wire or signal wire, is gonna to connect to the next available input on the IFM, and that is B13 which ultimately connects to input five on your PLC. Next, let's talk about the fuses, and more importantly, these four LEDs that are above the fuse symbols. They actually provide a blown fuse indication. If I supply 20, a little bit of current to this circuit here um, through A2 and check continuity through B2, and then pull my fuse, you notice that I actually have a diode that lights up that is a blown fuse indicator. And if I close this circuit, it goes away and I have continuity. Don't have continuity, that diode lights up. That's this portion of the diagram here. That's what that is actually indicating. Let's go back to the four banks of 16 terminals, all 64 terminals, and take a look at how we'll actually wire up the power supply. We already have our V1 wired up in the second bank of 16 terminals. We're going to connect that to V0 and also to V2 and then lastly to V3. Now supply all 24 volt supplies to it. Next we're going to connect our commons, um, common 0 to common 1 to common 2 and common 3. Now this is assuming that all your field devices are going to be 24 volt and that your power supply can handle enough amps to supply all the field devices, all 16 field devices, with one power supply. So that's your IFM module. Alan Bradley, 
Each one's specific. And um, the best way to get familiar with this is actually try and use a continuity tester and pin it out and underst uh, understand how these cable connections are connected to your terminals and how your supplies come in and feed the fused and then fused link feeds your sensor and your sensor comes back and feeds an input which connects to an input, um, uh, it feeds to a pinout on your cable feeding your input module on your PLC.